Um, if you look at the table, you'll see that I have the lines up and down going with ribbons and across as well to see if when I lay the fabric on top of this, it'll be come up straight. It'll have to be adjusted and moved a little until the lines going up and down match the implement that are on the table that's a square. As you can see now, I have moved the fabric over. So now the T-square matches up the ribbons that are on the fabric. And I usually put the, hold them down with some heavy books so the fabric doesn't move as I place the pattern on top. I've already decided where the emblem will go. And so, okay. And so you can see, I will place the emblem on and you will see that it's in the center of one of the designs. Now we're looking at the front of the chasuble. Again, the ribbons are placed up and down and across. And the T-square is placed there to make sure that the fabric is laying on the straight of the grain. And if you need to, put books so the fabric does not move. Use the pattern to go up and down the center. And there will be ribbons along the edge, which are either half inch or three quarter inch, plus the one quarter or one half inch ribbon, which will go up and down. As we continue the vestment, you'll see the placement of it later. Just make sure that the pattern that we have chosen for the back is the same one that we are choosing for the front between the two ribbons that we're going to make. So center it, place it down, and cut it out. Okay, the vestment is now on the table. And as I told you, I want you to cut it out. I wanted to tell you that I don't pull the ribbons out. I just pin the ribbons down and then cut it out. Now we will move to the stole. Again, we have the ribbon going up and down the pattern. The placement of the bottom is three and a half inches from where you want the cross to be. This particular cross happens to be three inches. So I have the placement of the cross three and a half inches up. I've made marks on the four inch and the three inch position and made sure that the distance from the center over to the edge is even down here and up there. The stole is in two pieces and this will be one side. We will have to flip the pattern over to cut out the next one as the angle needs to be the opposite of this one. As before, just fold the ribbons up and cut the pattern out. This particular fabric doesn't move a lot, so it was very easy for me just to take the pattern, flip it over, pin it. As you see, I match the pattern underneath with this one. What I do is put the pin through find the same pattern underneath and pin it. And I did the same thing all the way down, making sure that it's uh, even. And as you see, there's an angle here. And that's what I was talking about. That's why you have to flip it over. So we're just gonna cut this one out as well. Now we will work on the maniple. The ribbon again is placed down the center of the pattern you wish to use. And I've measured from the center over to the edge to make sure that the ribbon is right in the middle. And 
the cross is placed again in the same place that we had the stole in and it is placed three and a half inches from the bottom and that's where we're going to place it and cut it out and we'll fold the ribbons again up and we'll cut out a pattern just exactly like this one we do not need to turn this one over since the top is flush Our next step is to cut out the manifold. You can hardly see the manifold since it's right on top of the other design, but it is right here. And we will cut it out just by placing it on top of the other pattern and it will match perfectly. The chalice veil is 24 inches uh, square. I placed a mark in the middle of the pattern going down and across and I matched up the ribbons so they will lay the pattern will lay right on top of the ribbons the cross will be placed at the bottom down here I centered it into the same pattern that I used on the stole and the metal right in the center here and it's three and a half inches up from the bottom and we'll just place it like this and turn the ribbons up. I'll go over that again for you. Just turn it and pin it in place. So you can use the ribbons over and over again. I use different color ribbons depending on the fabric that I am working with. This fabric is nice. It does not move a lot. Some of the fabrics that you may come across will move quite a bit and you will have to really work with the fabric to move it so it is centered properly. There we go. And then you just cut it out. I have taken the chalice veil and I have marked with two pins where the cross is going to go. On this fabric, it's pretty easy to tell where it's going to go, be placed, but not all fabrics are the same. And so it's a good habit to get into to mark the cross right away. Now we have the burrs. Again, we put the ribbons in form of an X and we use the markings on the pattern to center it. You'll notice that the cross is not quite in the center. It's four and a half inches on this side and five and a half inches over here because we will have to insert the cardboard in through here and you'll note you'll see that later. So you will center this and turn back the ribbons and cut this out, place it on another piece of fabric and cut one exactly the same as this one. If you happen to have some fabric left, you could choose to cut out a linen bag. This particular linen bag here, I'm going to put the cross down here place it like so and cut it out. Uh, I may choose to use some of the trim and put a cross on top or I could just leave it like that if I like. And I'll explain how to put the linen bag together. It's not that difficult. And that should be it for um, everything we need to cut out. We have some lining piece pieces and interlining piece pieces which I'll show you later. On the table now, I have the different um, pieces. This is the burse. We're going to be putting the cross right here in the middle. And on the other side, I have put a piece of fabric. It's a little heavier than a, than a little cotton. And so look for something that's quite sturdy. 
because after this is sewn on we're going to trim around on that other piece you'll see this here is the chalice veil and I've done a little piece on the back as well some fabric and we're going to be sewing this right here if this fabric was very flimsy we would take a piece of fabric and run it all the way to the bottom to the top not on the whole thing but just the top to the bottom so it would hold in place better if the fabric is too flimsy then the cross after a while will buckle this fabric here will buckle so it has to have something behind it next we'll move on to the maniple. The maniple, here is the cross. It will get centered and sewn in the, right here. And I put a piece only up to here. We don't need the whole piece on this fabric because it's pretty sturdy. And I've done the same thing to the other piece of the maniple and to the stole pieces as well. And you'll see them again once I have the crosses sewn on. For the front of the chasuble, we put a piece on the whole entire section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some thread and I'm going to just put a basting stitch in different places, not of the same color thread. I'm going to use some silly green here so it'll really contrast so I'll be able to see it and pull it out when I'm all done. We're going to put this on across the fabric. So when we go to place the trim, down in the middle and up, the, um, it won't buckle. If you don't put a piece of fabric underneath, then the fabric it tends to buckle. And it comes, <coughs> oops, sorry. We've done the same thing to the back of the chasuble. The back of the chasuble has some fabric on it. Not heavier than cotton, but not um, as heavy as canvas. Here is a sample of something you could use. It's not too, it's not too see-through. If I put my hand through, you can't see my hand. You can see a little other shadow over the hand. So you want it to be a little heavy, but you don't want it to be an interfacing that's too light. On something that is very, very light, weight in fabric, you could use something like this, which is a, a canvas, and it'll give your um, piece that you're working on some, it'll give it some stability. And that's it for this section.